Which of the following is a key feature of a 64-bit operating system compared to a 32-bit operating system? Is it A, improved compatibility with older software? Is it B, faster boot times? Is it C, ability to address more RAM? Or is it D, enhanced power management? You now have five seconds. And the quick answer is C, ability to address more RAM. A 64-bit operating system can access and utilize larger amounts of RAM compared to a 32-bit system. This is crucial for running memory-intensive applications and multitasking efficiently. On a 64-bit Windows operating system, you can have more applications open simultaneously without running into memory limitations. And for the incorrect answers, improved compatibility with older software. 32-bit systems might have better compatibility with older applications designed for them. Faster boot times. Boot times are influenced by various factors and not solely determined by the bitness of the OS. And the enhanced power management. Power management is not directly related to the bitness of the operating system. And for the next question of our exam, question number two. And the question states, what is the purpose of a file system in an operating system? Is it A, it controls the physical hardware of the computer? Is it B, it manages the allocation of system resources? Is it C, it provides a user interface for the operating system? Or is it D, it organizes and stores file on a storage device, on storage devices? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is D. It organizes and stores files on storage devices. A file system defines how files are named, organized, stored, and retrieved on a storage devices like hard drives or SSDs. When you save a document on your computer, the file system determines where and how the data is stored on the storage device. And for the incorrect answers, uh, it controls the physical hardware on the computer. This is the role of uh, device drivers and hardware abstraction layers. It manages the allocations of system resources. Resource management is handled by the operating system's kernel, and it provides a user's interface for the operating system. User interfaces are separate components for the file system. And for the next question of our exam, question number three. And the question states, what is the purpose of the task manager utility in Windows operating systems? Is it A, to manage software licenses? Is it B, to create and manage user accounts? Is it C, to troubleshoot network connectivity issues? Or is it D, to monitor and manage running processes and applications? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is D, to monitor and manage running processes and applications. The task manager provides information about active processes, CPU and memory usage, and allows users to terminate unresponsive applications. When your computer becomes slow, you can open task manager to identify which application is consuming excessive resources and end it if necessary. And for the incorrect answers to manage software licenses, software licensing is typically handled through dedicated tools or settings to create and manage users' accounts. Users' accounts are usually managed through the control panel or settings. And to troubleshoot network connectivity issues, network troubleshooting often involves different tools and utilities. And for the next question of our exam, question number four. And the question states, what is the primary purpose of an antivirus software? Is it A, to encrypt sensitive data? Is it B, to prevent unauthorized access to a network? Is it C, to detect and remove malware from a computer? Or is it D, to manage network firewalls? You now have five seconds. And the quick answer is C, to detect and remove malware from a computer. Antivirus software is designed to identify and remove various types of malicious software such as viruses, worms, trojans, and spyware. If a computer antivirus program detects a suspicious file that matches the signature of a known malware, it will quarantine or remove the file to prevent further infection. And for the incorrect answers to encrypt sensitive data, encryption software is focused on securing data, not specifically on malware detection, uh, to prevent unauthorized access to a network. This is more related to firewalls and access control. And to manage network firewalls, antivirus software is distinct from firewall management tools. And for the next question of our exam, question number five. And the question states, what is the purpose of a firewall in network security? Is it A, to encrypt data during transmission? Is it B, to prevent unauthorized access and protect against threats? Is it C, to manage domain names and IP addresses? Or is it D, to store backup copies of sensitive data? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is B, to prevent unauthorized access and protect against threats. 
Firewalls act as barriers between trusted networks and untrusted networks, monitoring and controlling incoming and outgoing traffic to block unauthorized access and potential threats. A business firewall protects external unauthorized access to the company's internal network, safeguarding sensitive data from cyber, cyber attacks. And for the incorrect answers to encrypt data during transmission, encryption is a separate process from firewalling. To manage domain names and IP addresses, domain and IP management are typically handled by DNS servers. And to store backup copies of sensitive data, firewalls are not used for data backup purposes. And for the next question of our exam, question number six. And the question states, what does the term phishing refer in the context of cybersecurity, is it A, a type of malware that spreads through email attachments? Is it B, the process of scanning a network for vulnerabilities? Is it C, an attack that floods a network with excessive traffic? Or is it D, an attempt to trick individuals into revealing sensitive information? In our five seconds. And the correct answer is D, an attempt to trick individuals into revealing sensitive information. Phishing is a social engineering attack in which attackers attempt to deceive individuals into disclosing confidential information, such as passwords or credit card details. A phishing email might impersonate a bank and ask the recipient to click on a link to update their account information, but the link leads to a fake website designed to steal the user's cred credentials. And for the incorrect answers, a type of malware that spreads through email attachments, this describes a different type of known threat uh, known as malware attachment, the process of scanning a network for vulnerabilities. This is called network scanning or vulnerability assessment, and an attack that floods a network with excessive traffic. This is known as a distributed denial of service or DDoS attack. And for the next question of our exam, question number seven. And the question states, a user reports that a specific application crashes every time they try to open it. What should be the first step in troubleshooting this issue? Is it A, to reinstall the operating system? Is it B, to check for software updates for the application? Is it C, to upgrade the computer's hardware? Or is it D, to run a full, full system scan for malware? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is B, check for software updates for the application. Application crashes can be caused by bugs or compatibility issues. Checking for updates ensures that you have the latest version with bug fixes. If a web browser uh, crashes upon startup, checking for updates might resolve the issue by applying patches that address known bugs. And for the incorrect answers, reinstall the operating system. Reinstalling the OS is a drastic step and not the first troubleshooting action to upgrade the computer's hardware. Hardware upgrades should only be considered after other software-related solutions have been attempted. And to run a full system scan for malware, malware can cause issues, but if the problem is specific to one application, it's less likely to be malware-related. And for the next question of our exam, question number eight. And the question states, a user complains that their computer's performance has significantly decreased after installing a freeware application. What could be a possible cause of this issue? Is it A, the computer's BIOS settings needs to be updated? Is it B, the computer is overheating? Is it C, the freeware application contains, contains hardware? Or is it D, the computer's antivirus software needs to be disabled? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is C, the freeware application contains hardware. Some freeware applications come bundled with hardware or potentially unwanted programs that can degrade system performance. After installing a free utility to optimize system performance, the user starts experiencing excessive ads and a decrease in overall system speed. And for the incorrect answers, the computer's BIOS setting need to be updated. BIOS updates might affect compatibility or certain hardware features, but are unlikely to be the primary cause of performance issues. The computer is overheating. Overheating can lead to performance issues, but is not directly tied to the installation of a specific application. And the computer's antivirus software needs to be disabled. Disabling antivirus software is generally not recommended, as in, and uh, it's unlikely to improve performance caused by a freeware application. And for the next question for exam, question number nine. And the question states, what does RAID or redundant array of independent disks offer in terms of data storage? Is it A, higher physical disk speed? Is it B, increased data capacity for individual disks? Is it C, improved access time for single files? Or is it D, enhanced data redundancy and fault tolerance? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is D, enhanced data redundancy and fault tolerance. RAID configurations offer various levels of data redundancy and fault tolerance by combining multiple disks to provide redundancy against disk 
failure. In a RAID 1 configuration, data is mirrored onto two drives, so if one drive fails, the data remains accessible from the other drive. And for the incorrect answers, higher physical disk speed. Uh, RAID configurations might improve read and write speeds, but aren't primarily designed for speed. Increased data capacity for uh, of individual disks. Some RAID configurations in increase capacity, but it's not their primary purpose. Improved access time for single files. RAID configurations might uh, enhance overall performance, but are not typically aimed at single file access times. And for the last question for exam, question number 10. And the question states, what is the purpose of change management process in IT operations? Is it A, to document the procedures for troubleshooting hardware issues? Is it B, to implement security patches on the network? Is it C, to ensure that changes to IT systems are planned, tested and approved? Or is it D, to perform regular data backups? You now have five seconds. And the correct answer is Z, to ensure that changes to IT systems are planned, tested, and approved. Change management processes are put in place to minimize risks associated with changes to IT systems. Changes are carefully planned, tested, and approved before implementation. Before updating the company's email server software, the IT teams follow a change management process to assess potential risks and ensure a smooth transition. And for the incorrect answers to, uh, to document the pro uh, procedures for troubleshooting hardware issue issues, this might be a part of documentation or standard operating procedure, but it's not the primary purpose of change management. To implement security patches on the network, patch management is a separate process for change management and to perform regular data backups. Data back backups are important, but are not the main focus of change management process. Ladies and gents, if you'd like to further support this channel, make sure to check my Udemy Instructor channel where I've posted a number of CompTI exams. The exams consist of 270 questions each and are presented in greater detail. The link for my Udemy Instructor channel is presented in the description of this video. If and only if you found this video informative, make sure to drop a sub and share it with your friends. I hope you found this video informative and I will see you guys next time. Peace!